And it's a good thing there's no Americans on this show because I swear to God we beat the hell out of them. It's a, anyways, well, I guess we're live. Are we live? We are. We're live. Okay. <laughs> so, well, thank uh, guys and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming here. We're gonna have. I think we're gonna have some comments from the Peanut Gallery. We have Morgan Bouillon Retzi. We have Mark Rodrigue and Robert Beleski. Uh, Mac. Uh, are you you're very comfortable with uh, speaking in English because this is a Canadian show and it's bilingual we can just switch anytime okay so you're you're good with that oh yeah yeah I'm good uh, English French uh, both and Robert thanks man thanks for uh, actually it's the first time I meet you yeah this uh, the first time we meet no I was talking I was talking to a rabbi oh uh, to Robert, mm. Robert. I'm, I'm already in French mode man the rabbi <laughs> <laughs> so you know what uh, Bobby, uh, Bobby and Harold wanted us, wanted me to ask you questions. Like first they asked me to do this interview and then they give me questions. What's next? They're going to feed me. What the hell? I can't speak. Mm. Hey, I mean, uh, the, uh, anyways, whatever. We're too cute for them. That's the thing with the Americans. <laughs> Enough about me. Uh, okay. So you know what? I'm going to do a Bobby question here. And guys in the peanut gallery, I call the peanut gallery, uh, that's the chat. So Steven, thanks for being there. Brian, man, it's gonna happen. The Habs Leafs, who won the Habs Leaf game a couple of days ago? No, it's tonight. The, what, didn't they play a couple, uh, isn't it a two out of three? Ah, uh, Christ. You know when I stopped <laughs> watching hockey? You know when I stopped watching hockey? When they traded Chelios. Oh. That's when, they traded Chel when they traded Chelios, I said, hey, man, they don't know what they're doing. Molson can go. And I even switched beers. I drink 50 now. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, gentlemen, uh, I'm going to start with Robert. Robert, you got you got Stilicchio or Stilicchio. I'm, I'm still uncertain how to, how to pronounce that. Um, and you've got two games with Holly Spiel, as I know. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So, Margan, which ones? Do you have Marcus Aurelius and behind Margan and Stilik? I think it's called Stilico. Well, in English, in English, which is the only way I can pronounce it, it's Stilico. Stilico, eh? Stilico, yeah. And yeah, well, which is, I'm sure, incorrect, but everything, I, I, in, I, I don't everything know. in English is incorrect. So, yeah, that, that well, <laughs> yeah, well, we say the same in French, so it's probably correct. How do you say it in French? Stilico? Stilico. It sounds Quebecois, Morgan. That's very good of you. Uh, okay, so Robert. You've been here too long. <laughs> Robert. Uh, so we're, we're here on behalf of uh, San Diego HistCon. And, and have, you got, have you people met... Uh, uh, I'm screaming. I'm always screaming. Have you people met Harold? I have not. You have no, not yes. met Harold? I am. Uh, has Harold ever come down to uh, uh, Stack Academy? He hasn't, but he should. Not, not sure. No, uh, he hasn't yet. Yeah. He hasn't yet, eh? Yeah. I've, I've been trying a couple of times to, uh, to to induce him to come, but not he hasn't um, found the, the opportunity yet. I hope he, he does sometime. Why? He just doesn't care. He's American. We're cute. We're cute. <laughs> Us Canadians, we're no, cute. We, we've had a number of great American guests in the past. I mean, so I think Harold would be definitely... Uh, a great addition to that. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, <laughs> let's get serious here. So, Robert, why that era? Why the Roman era? Uh, I like it. I find it really interesting. Uh, with Stilicho, I find late Roman history in particular really interesting. So both of the games I did are kind of uh, later. You know, uh, Marcus Aurelius isn't really late. It's kind of it's kind of the peak of the Roman Empire. But there there haven't been a tremendous number of games set 
during that period, which was something that made it interesting for me. But Stilicho very much so is kind of late Roman Empire, late Western Roman Empire. And I just thought it was a fascinating time. It's a period that I'm very interested in, and lots of interesting stories, lots of drama, lots of interesting uh, things going on. So I thought it would be, you know, interesting, interesting scenario for a game. Uh, uh, Robert, if, if you don't mind, uh, what uh, I'm going to ask you, what do you do? Like, you're, are you a full-time game designer? No, no, not at all. No, I work mainly actually in the film and television industry. Okay. Uh, and I teach. So I, I, I freelance in film and TV. I do some writing and uh, and directing for TV. Uh, I've worked in commercials, TV commercials for a long time. Okay. And I also teach at, uh, at a college, local college here. Uh, so the design for me is strictly hobby. Okay, and in, in the because I know a lot of people in the film industry in Montreal. Is there any crossover Montreal and Toronto film industry people or no? A little bit, not too much though. They tend to be they tend to be fairly separate uh, separate industries. You see, you see people in the United States of America. I'm speaking now from San Diego Histcon. I don't know why you called it Histcon. It sounds like histamine, but it's it's whatever. It's Harold's baby. Let's see, je m'en calles. But anyways, <clears throat> um, you see people. Robert is from Toronto, and Mac is from Quebec. Now they don't like each other. They don't. They don't. I love Toronto. I love, I love Toronto. Montreal. I, I've been I'm just joking. I, I'm just joking. Uh, and, and, and the thing is, Morgan, Morgan, mm. is she a Quebecer? No. Mark, do we accept her as a Quebecer? Because I don't think she, she, she doesn't like Putin. She doesn't like the way we speak. No. And when you say we are talking Quebecois. <laughs> so you know what, we Morgan? Have a nice life in France. But anyways, getting back to Robert. <laughs> Robert, are there, are there uh, your 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 interest in the Roman in that Roman era, that, 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 that those two games that you did? Uh, do, are, do you have a history fascination on that? Did you study oh, a little yeah. bit of history? Yeah, I, I, yeah, very very interested in that period, and I always have been since high school. You know, I had a I, I. It's probably the same for a lot of us, but you know, I my interest in history started in high school. I had a great high school history teacher. Uh, who taught ancient history and classical history, and I just really, uh, really loved it. So I've kept maintained an interest in it, and it just always sort of stayed with me. Um, I have a little bit. I did a master's degree um, in uh, in communications, but okay. I specialized in the history of communication. So I have a little bit of historical training, um, which just helps me deal with some of the sources and 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 kind of with research and so forth. But my my main interest is the stories. I like the stories. I, I, I like I, the I, stories. You know, I'm a storyteller. And That's how I approach games. Now, um, when you approached, uh, did you did you solicit other companies other than Hollingspiel, or you have you have a relationship with uh, Amabel? Uh, with uh, Stilico, it was with. Well, actually, there's kind of an interesting story here. So. Um, uh, I have a relationship with Holland Spiel. They've been absolutely fantastic to work with. It's been the two games now. Uh, Stilico is my second game, but it was actually the game I designed first. And it was with another publisher who I don't think I'll name for uh, quite a while. And uh, it received some development work there. And it's just their interest kind of changed. They kind of sort of moved away from more games uh, and went into Kickstarters and some larger projects and stuff like that. And I kind of felt the game was languishing. So by that point, I had uh, Marcus Aurelius was out. And I had such a wonderful time working with uh, Amabel and Mary that I went right to them with uh, with Silico, and it's been a wonderful relationship. And what's your next project? Is it in the same vein? My next project is actually going to be a two-player game. So Silico and Marcus Aurelius are both uh, solo games. I'm slowly working up the player count. Um, and uh, it's actually going to be, this game is going to be for Capstone. Capstone games. Um, Capstone. It, it doesn't ring a bell for some reason. It probably doesn't ring a bell because they're not really a war game company. They uh, they've done a number of wonderful games, uh, some really terrific train games, uh, and a couple by uh, Amabel, actually, um, uh, such as Irish Gage, and uh, there's a game coming out called Iberian Gage, and they do um, uh, all sorts of wonderful stuff like that. But the game that I'm working on with them is about the Siege of Vienna, the um, 1683 Siege of Vienna. And this was something that they actually approached me with. Clay Capstone kind of approached me about to sort of see what I had, what I was working on. This was something I've been kind of, kind of developing on my own for a while. 
And I demoed the game, we talked about it, and uh, he felt that it was maybe a good fit for his interest in kind of starting to introduce maybe a little bit of a broader audience, uh, or his audience, the audience that Capstone has, which is a little bit more of a sort of a general interest audience, uh, to war games. So that's something we've been working on together. It's been, it's been really now, exciting. Now, what's happening now is the cult of the new. For some reason, uh, uh, people like, well, Mark, and uh, people like Morgan, putting out these like weird ass games like what the hell like morgan uh, morgan put out a hubris i remember when she was when she was um we were at, at stack the last time stack was happening and it was like man uh all these obscure titles are now coming out and that's what i call now the cult of the new are you uh robert are you that looks part of that are, are, are you, are you, wait, my <laughs> gang, for, for God's sake, Hold it closer, I want to see it. Oh, there we go. Bloody hell. <laughs> is that, is that fine? That's not final art, is it? Or is it? Oh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> that's, uh, is that, is that your art? Your, uh, your temp art? Oh, I mean, this is just. Uh, yes, that's uh, Paul, Max. That's I'm Paul, sure I stole from, <laughs> from the net and, and slapped together years ago, but it's. Uh... Okay. Um. Um, Robert, I was going to say something. Then Morgan rudely <coughs> interrupted me. Um, what were you talking about? <laughs> Call the, the cult of the new. The cult of the new. So, the cult of the new. Paul Rohrbaugh, David Thompson, you guys. Um, all these weird, even vocal. Uh, all these weird, weird, like, uh, uh, vocal, just the Nevsky, uh, Morgan with, with Pendragon, Mark Bayonets and Tomahawks. Actually, I was thinking of, um, Mark, when I was, when I said you, I was thinking of who did the game? Was it Marco Poutré? Who did the game, uh, Rebellion? Um, Marco Poutré, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Marco. Yeah, 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 Marco. Okay, that, see, like, who? Uh, Who's, who would have known about that? Now we know about Upper Canada Village. We know some Canadian names. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I, I, I have uh, I have uh, an anecdote uh, about uh, Marco's game. Yeah. Uh, later, if you want to hear, since Actually, Marco is not here, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna continue with you, uh, Mark. Mark, by the way, is sporting for your American viewers a very voyageur. Quebecois, Canadian ma man. I mean, uh, he was a, he. This is a coureur de bois, real man, real. Uh, the 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 creator of American wow. civilization <laughs> was him. <laughs> the creator oh. of American civilization started in Quebec. Put yeah. that in your head, and we beat the Americans at the only war they lost. Anyways, Matt. Yeah. Uh, bayonets and tomahawks. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Uh, it's been a lifelong dream. Uh, I hated. Uh, I hated that part of our history uh, at school. Uh, I only wanted uh, Napoleon, World War Two, and uh, Quebec, Canada was uninteresting. And then uh, in my early 20s, I, uh, I fell on a comic, uh, French comics, Bande dessinée, they call like, that. Yeah, well, which one? And, uh, uh, Les Pionniers du Nouveau Monde, Pioneers of the New World. And it started with Braddock's defeat at the hands of the, the Native Americans and the uh, Canadians. And uh, I, I was hooked. I was hooked for life. And uh, this is... Uh, my third attempt at making a project about uh, that uh, conflict. And always uh, always with the same game you're talking about. It's just your third attempt concerning this game. Uh, concerning the subject. The subject, uh, and, okay. And thank, thankfully, the previous attempt uh, were not published. And uh, thankfully, I uh, met a lot of uh, extraordinary people when I did that last version. Namely, uh, Marco Poutré, Morgan. Uh, uh, who, who developed who developed the game? Uh, Marco Poutré. Okay. Uh, uh, you have to remember his name because he's uh, I, uh, he's an excellent developer. Uh, and it, it, it's funny that you say that, Mark. Um, it's, I mean, the Americans in terms of numbers are what three hundred and fifty million. Obviously, it's loud. They're loud because the numbers are loud. We're mm -hmm. thirty-five million. 
And man, do we have a lot of talent here in terms of a game that, especially like, it, 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 it's it's incredible. And and the amount of history that Canada has to offer, I'm sure if we were 350 million, it would be a louder thing. But um, anyways, Mac, continue. I get distracted. I'm ADD. Like no, no, no problem. No problem. So, uh, so yeah, I, I love that period. I even became a reenactor. And what, what I wear is my, uh, my French Marine uniform, the one we wear in the wilderness. That's the Petite Guerre outfit. Uh, one of the many words uh, Americans have trouble uh, pronouncing in my game. But... Uh, I have some trouble with English uh, <laughs> names too, so uh, it's it's just uh, it's just okay. Um, so I, I wanted the game to be fun. I was working uh, previously uh, to that uh, with an extremely detailed simulation with uh, uh, a table for combat and uh, even uh, even tables for how many ships would come and uh, how how you had to pay for each. Uh, each Indian nation to uh, native nation to join you. Uh, so, uh, so I, I wanted something very that that put you in the story that you forgot about the game. And I think I've achieved that because uh, I didn't uh, turn uh, crazy while uh, playtesting it again and again and again. I I enjoyed it every time. Every game was different and. Uh, and I have the, the great uh, fortune to be a graphic designer in my job as well, uh, except I work on uh, annoying subject like corporate. Uh, <laughs> so you did the art. You did the art on your game. I did uh, all the art. Yeah, yeah. And this the is counters, a, the counters, every, every, everything. The rule so book that, layout. You did the layout of the rule book. Everything, everything. Ah, and, uh, so boring. Uh, no, no, that was cool, but it's a lot of pressure. And I know I'm not the only uh, designer doing that. Uh, there's uh, uh, ah, uh, Mark Simonich, Mark Simonich, my graphic he, boss at GMT. Uh, yeah, he, okay, he, he okay. Does, uh, yeah. Uh, and there's also uh, the one who makes uh, uh, games about uh, World War II uh, aer aerial combat. Oh, uh, uh, Lee Primitive uh, Wood. Yes, yes, Libre may come wood. Uh, I admire these counters for uh, for a co combat commander. I studied them a lot to do. What well, mine. I mean, a combat commander? See, um, Chad Jensen. Yeah, he's the author, but the one who did the counter is uh, Lee Brimacom oh, Wood. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 all uh, help each other. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, I see a question on the yes, screen. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll answer it. So uh, uh, the, the naval aspect is absent from uh, all the other uh, French and Indian War games. Uh, so uh, you can play uh, all the, the, the naval aspect uh, of the game. And especially you can uh, live all the conflict in Acadia, Nova Scotia. Uh, so it's a wider wow, that's cool. that's theater. Cool. Yeah, what, yeah. What, year, what year is this set in? It, it starts in uh, 1755, oh, and, it, and, it, and it ends in uh, 1759, uh, because 1760 uh, is not playable. It's just uh, the Brits bulldozing. Uh, Look at that. With not a lot of talent, uh, the very few French forces that remain. At so, Mark, extreme cost to the crown. So, Mark, uh, in 1755, at the beginning of, let's say, is there a camp? There's a campaign in your game. Yeah, there are. There are. Yes, there. Uh, you can play uh, single years or the full campaign. Now, when you play the full campaign, where do we start? In what region of, of Eastern Canada do we start? Well, uh, we start everywhere because it's a three-pronged attack against New France. You have in the Ohio, you have in the center in the Lake Champlain corridor, and you have also uh, on uh, in Acadia the, with the seizure of uh, Fort Beau Séjour. You know, man. Um, it, it, uh, anyways, I'm, I'm I'm just so impassioned about all this stuff. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, it's it's really it's it, amazing. It's it's a cool period. Uh, you know, study. I mean, I um, my parents came here because of the war. So I'm Italian. I was born in Quebec. Je suis un Québécois, but mm -hmm. all my upbringing is Italian. So 
I'm an Italian who was born in Quebec, who became a Quebecer, you understand? And mm -hmm. I fell in love with the history of Quebec. It's, 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 or Canada. It's, oh, holy cow, holy cow. Mm -hmm. it, it, there was nothing here. And some guy from France, smelly and, 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 and drunk and who knows what else, comes over here and sets up La Nouvelle France, man. Wicked. Yeah. Anyways, I well, digress. Yeah, there was not exactly nothing. There, there were there were many uh, uh, native nations well, that course. were there for ages, and we just uh, yes, we just uh, spoiled everything. Uh, yes, and I just with our say, diseases. Yeah, I just want to say that I'm from Italian origins. I had nothing mm. to do with any of that. Mm. Okay, it was. But just, I'm I'm half French. My mother is French, so uh, it's I'm really recent French. that uh, French from France. Yeah, my my mother uh, my mother is from Paris. My French is uh, my father is from Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke. So, uh, yeah, I love that area. Yeah, anyways, okay, <laughs> okay, we gotta we gotta get to Morgan. Okay, okay, Morgan. How's it going, Morgan? Good and you? Very good. Now I see. I see, I saw you pulled out hubris and uh, Robert was like, he wants to see it. Show us, please, please show us. I want to see it too. So Robert had asked, a Jesus, that's a big box. Well, I, I don't think it will be that, I don't know. I mean, it will be a mounted map, so it might actually be fairly big. I, I, I don't know. This was done seven years ago. And you can see the back of the box has nothing to do with the current game. So <laughs> yeah. it was at the time. <laughs> now, was that? Did you have that box and those those components at uh, Stack? I did. I actually had that box done when I first pitched the game to GMT back in 2013, eight years ago. Twenty. Jesus. When was the last Stack? How long ago was that? The last stack, I mean, the last stack I attended was a so-called mini stack, so not the big event, was right. in December of 2019. Unbelievable. Was, Unbelievable. And we did actually play Hubris. Uh, now, now uh, we know uh, Morgan. You know, Morgan, for, the, for, the, for people who don't know uh, who we are, sorry, Mark, I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to ask you, I forgot to ask you, who are you, basically? Morgan, Morgan, what do you do? What am I doing? I, I'm doing way too many things, unfortunately, and that means this is crowding out the things I really love to do. <laughs> but, I mean, I know you're moving to France. I am. Yeah, I, I just uh, recently took a new position. Um, so back with a company I worked for for a number of years, uh, which is a big uh, a train and signaling system uh, <laughs> a company in France. And so I'm moving back to take that position uh, just, to, just outside of Paris um in just over a month i mean it's just uh, really yeah you're leaving in a month yeah we, we're getting uh, everything getting ready for that um while at the same time taking a new position uh, i've got teams all over the world and a lot of jet lag with the various teams so uh that, that's actually the reason i need to go back to paris because i need to go to a central position i mean montreal is nice but montreal for the world is is definitely off center and i don't understand what you just said I, I i'm just going to explain it to you when i've got i've got like 200 engineers in bangalore india we've got nine and a half hours time difference makes it a little bit difficult to schedule meetings <laughs> uh, and i also have team in singapore and bangkok which is even worse so um so that's why i'm going you know in this respect uh, paris is much more central from the time zone point of view and I mean, with all this moving and all that, you you haven't had much time to develop and or to to could. Was that a oh a train? The TGV. <laughs> this is actually a model. What is it? This is a model of the fastest train of Earth using regular trains. So that this is the world speed record on rail, which was established by an Alstom train in 2000, I want to say nine, but um, maybe wrong. And, and this is a, the, the model of the train. Now, why do you have that? 
I have that because I worked for Alstom in the past and before I ah. left Estonia, this was the gift from my colleagues. So wow, after 30 years, they gave you a model train? God, what a great company. Morgan, going back to hubris. Yes. Uh, when are we expecting, uh, when are we, ex when, when we what's the game coming out? Yes, um, this is an excellent question. I thank you for, <laughs> for asking it. Um, the, the thing is that there are a lot of great games currently being uh, in, work, in the works at GMT. Uh, so, so production slots are very hard to come by. I, I'm sure that Mark can testify, you know, how long it can get to get, uh, to get on the production schedule at, uh, at GMT. Um, mm. Now, in terms of development, the, the development of hybrids is... Now, who's, who's developing your game, uh, Morgan? Kevin Bernatz. So okay. Kevin Bernatz okay. has worked on GMT, worked um, also with Compass, um, done a, a ton of great games. I mean, from Cataclysm, working on a lot of Simonich games, etc. I mean, he's a very experienced guy, very nice guy to work with. Um, quite a different perspective from mine, which is useful because then we get, you know, different approaches to the game. Um, so now we, we have essentially completed the development of the game as has indeed shown it in, you know, originally. So all the, the base game, which is a three player game, all the two player games is ready, uh, tested and works. And obviously we, we now need to, to finalize, you know, the, the rule books and the playbooks and the examples of play and all these things, which will take a lot of time. Um, but then the problem is that I've been stupid enough to think that I could probably develop a fully solitaire mode for all three playable kingdoms in Hubris, which was definitely not my plan. <laughs> now, hold on a second. So who, who thought of this idea? You? I did. Yeah, you know, I can be extraordinarily stupid at times. Well, no, that, that, that's not what I mean. What, what I'm trying to say is that they have they have a solo department at GMT. Why don't you just, like, say? I do, I do, but then... And I will probably have to rely on them because I'm, I'm really at the moment have no time to work on it. But the, the original concept, the original drivers and, you know, the key parameters in order to drive this solitaire mode, I'm the only one who can, we can create. Hey, you're the only one, Morgan. No, but, but, but because I'm the only one who has this knowledge of, you know, what the external power powers would do. So I've got to lay these foundations. And then my plan is basically to hand it over to GMT1, so to Jason's team. Yeah. To say, okay, now make it work. Balance it, you know, test it thoroughly so we know it works. Um, but, but the basic concepts, you know, the, the, the basic parameters and drivers, no one else but me can, can do that. Okay, so Morgan, the process. Uh, um, so basically, you, dev uh, you, 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 you do your game, you pitch your game, your game is accepted, uh, there's development that's happening, and uh, you want certain things, and now you pass it on to, let's say, Jason, uh, Jason Carr. You give it to Jason Carr. He's a... He's a for, the solo, for the solo system, that we, but this is what will happen at some point, yes. That's what's going to happen, right? Yeah. But it's not quite there yet. Now... Now this is a long time and process from the from the conception of the game. I mean that we, we shouldn't even go in conception. Once you have your idea down, you've pitched. You started that in one year. What year did you start that? 2013. When you pitched it to GMT, is that right? Yes. And 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 um, Robert, is it the same thing at Holland Spiel? Like. Uh, a long development, long, long wait time. And, and I'm not saying um, it's a bad or good thing. I'm just saying because of the logistics of it and, and, and everything. No, I, Holland Spiel is, I think, a little quicker or quite a bit quicker, I should really say. With um, with uh, Wars, of Marcus, uh, Wars of Marcus Aurelius was very quick. It was only about a year uh, from bringing them the game to it being released. And Stilico took a little bit longer, but it was still only two years. So it's quite, um, they're, they're quite a fleet little company. And the company I'm working with now, with Capstone, the, the, the hope there is to bring out the game um, first quarter of 2022. So that'll be only a year, so. And, 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 and um, Robert, when you, um, 
Dan, the thing well, is that we, we should compare likes to likes. No, uh, yes, yes, yes. That's yes. I have not worked nonstop on hubris for eight years. I mean, I did Pendragon, for instance, in the middle. No, no, but I I understand. That's why I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go into the, the 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 creation and all that because that's very personal to everybody. I mean, uh, uh, so what? I could create a symphony in five minutes, and Beethoven it took him ten. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever. <laughs> um, but I mean, uh, the and 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 Mark. The process at uh, your game is from Compass Game, is that right? It was published by Compass. No, no, GMT. A GMT. What do we? Yeah, doing? it's uh, Marco's game. Oh, is, uh, Marco, GMT. that's it. Uh, it's Compass. It's okay, Compass. okay, okay. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, the bayonets and tomahawks. That is GMT. That is GMT, but uh, I was the bottleneck. Uh, it took four years. Uh, uh, it was on the uh, no, almost five years. It was on the P500 in uh, July 2016. Okay. And uh, every time I thought the game was ready, I needed to develop it more. But hey, it was my first game, and I'm so happy I didn't I release it before uh, because it, it it's like wine. It, it, it came out when it, it was <laughs> ripe. And um, Robert. Um, when you develop your game, let's say you have an idea, okay, like, like Stelicchio or, or Marcus Aurelius, are you constrained by the company's, um, like, can you go in, let's say, can you go into Hollenspiel and say, okay, look, this is a 300 chit uh, game, I want seven, uh, seven uh, counter sheets, this and this and that, or is there a restriction? Uh, Per game, I mean, when you show a game, does it say, "Look, you just need eight. this game. You will make it." There's 88 counters. There's an 11 by 17 inch. Uh, is it like that at Hollenspiel? Um, it's to to a certain extent. Hollenspiel kind of has, um, like, Amabel sort of has a, a thing that she says that she has a small table to test games on, so she prefers smaller size games. And it just so happens that my games are small. And this is something else we have to be kind of careful with, just kind of comparing games and comparing uh, sort of experiences or, you know, kind of experience and so forth like that is that, you know, I, I consider the games that I do to be quite small. They're fairly small in terms of counter size. Uh, the rule sets are pretty, pretty small. Now, was and that I, purposely done? It was for me, yes. And in, in, in my case, because I, uh, you know, as a as a parent with a, a fairly young child when I was developing these games, didn't have a lot of time myself right, right, right. to kind to, to kind of work with, and and that was something that kind of led me partly into game design was designing games that that sort of someone like like me could play, you know, uh, after after work and after parenting and so forth. Um, but with with Holland Spiel, yeah, there's always some talk about it. There's always some talk about here's here's sort of what the game is looking like. I think if you were to take a game that was too large. For Holland Spiel, they would just say, "Hey, you know, it's a great game, but it's not for us. It doesn't uh, fit with the kind okay, of production okay. that we do." Do you know okay, what I mean? So, yeah, no, no. So, I, that, and that's why I asked the question. And uh, I mean, GMT having this, I guess, unlimited resource in in terms of the, the we. Can, I guess we can say, is GMT the biggest company? Because Compass is getting up there now. Compass. I'm talking in terms of numbers, numbers in in, in uh, volumes that they have in terms of games. My guess would be GMT is GMT. Still, okay, yeah, so yeah. I guess so. I guess when when uh, Mark Mark or Morgan, when you propose a game to GMT, are you withholding? And I'm asking this question to Mark. Are you withholding um, Chrome? Are you withholding? Uh, what am I trying to say? Someone help me here. Are you withholding? Um, pieces in the game so you can bring your costs down or you just say this has got four thousand chits and this is it well uh, in my case i aimed for uh, simplicity and the tightest uh, components list for the subject because i know of other uh, games on the same topic that have uh, far more components uh, i'm a guy who likes to play a game in an evening so I'm not interested in uh, hundreds of counters. And, okay, so, okay, I see. I, I, I'm not, I, I, it, it's just not to my taste. I, I understand those who like that. And uh, so, yeah, I, I didn't uh, withhold uh, anything. So, Mark, how long does the game take to play per scenario? Well, a uh, one-year scenario will be approximately two hours. 
Uh, so we have two two one year scenarios uh, that are really cool to play. They're they're complete in the in them in themselves. You don't feel uh, like you interrupted something when yeah, you yeah. finish. And um, God, what was I gonna say? I, I I'm so lost. I can't believe it. Um, <laughs> Rob um, Robert. Um, my God, I. This, you know, and this is what happens when it's live. You see, I'm a musician, and on TV, you can't, you, you can't do what they do on stage. Because on stage, if I mess up, like I'm messing up now, I can, at least I could dance. I can do something. I can entertain the crowd. But here, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You could dance. <laughs> I'm, wearing, I'm not wearing any pants. Anyways. Well, I, I would like to know what, uh, what Mark Ann does when it comes to counter, counter limitations and that. stuff because uh, she makes very big games. Yeah, and you know what? I think uh, when I spoke to Gene last time, it was a big problem. It, it, too much money is spent on Morgan's game. But anyways, <laughs> go ahead, Morgan. Now, my experience is that I've never... I've never had any kind of instruction from GMT to cut on, on the content of the game. Nothing. No. I mean, and I, it, it may surprise people because, yes, they are big games, but actually, if you look at, um, you know, counter cons or, or pieces, I mean, Pendragon has a lot of hidden pieces. I think we are, we tally at something like 200 pieces, which is a lot. Uh, it doesn't have any counters, actually. Um, but we were never constrained. I mean, I, I was always trying, I mean, during playtesting to, to properly assess how many counters were needed and just to try to keep it obviously as, as efficient as could be. Um, but there was never any restriction. And, and Ubris will not have that many uh, counters, actually. It will have a lot of cards, it will have things like that, but not that many counters. Well, I remember, I, re I think from, from GMT, it's really about, um, I, I I do my best and Kevin and I, we worked on that. And then we told them, okay, this is what we need. And we actually built the provisions saying, hey, there's still maybe some need for extra cards, you know, for the, the, the solitaire or the two player system, etc." So we actually built a little bit of a provision and GMT just told us, you know, okay, this is what it is. And, um, and you know, at that, at that level, it's not necessarily the main cost driver. I mean, obviously if you go from a couple hundred to a couple thousand counters, it would have an impact. But I don't think anyone wants to get there unless, obviously, you're doing like, uh, what is it, uh, Time of time for Trumpets, the, the, the latest. Uh, the Bruno Seligalio uh, game, yeah. This game, obviously, is huge, but. Huge. Uh, or, or Pacific War. I mean, the upcoming uh, revamp of uh, Mark Herman's classic. I mean, I expect this one is going to have thousands upon thousands of counters. Which is going to to kill our counter clippers, <laughs> and it's funny, eh? It's 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 a reissue that, and there's a lot of reissues <clears throat> happening. But the new ideas are all less counters, less time, uh, less less table space. It's like it's it's it's. And more, I don't want to say it's like fast food, but it's like yeah, no, all, not, but I'm more euro. Well, and, and again, going to Morgan, Euro. Am I wrong, Morgan? When I was at Stack, uh, we were there and you were uh, ex exhibiting your game. Uh, and we spoke and I said, there's a lot of Euro elements in your game. Am I wrong? I think you, I mean, yes and no. And I, I think I was actually pissed off when you said that. But, <laughs> but the, the point is that I, I am, we are, you know, a game designer, is an innovator in many ways. And what an innovator is, an innovator takes good ideas from everywhere, including outside of a field, to, to find new application and to deliver, you know, to, to support the vision that they are bringing, in this case, to the game table in the best possible way. And so if that means picking ideas from the Euro world or from other fields, excellent. Um, so I'm not going to say I'm never going to use this or that mechanism aspect or concept because it comes from euros. Even for I don't play euros myself because I don't I don't like the common approach of euros, which I feel lack in realism, lack in historicity. Uh, I'm I'm not personally I'm not you know I'm not. Uh, addicted to short games. I mean, I don't mind long games. I have the, at least for another month, I've got a big 
game table so I can leave the game out and play it, you know, the time I, <laughs> the time I need to play it out. Um, so so I, I actually believe that you can hon only get truly in the depths of a game when, when you have time. I mean, I, I, there's, there's, no, there's no going around that. So, so anything which plays out in maybe 20 or 30 minutes, in my opinion, cannot be deep enough for my test. Well, no, I understand. Yes. So, so, but that doesn't mean you cannot use, you know, some of the mechanisms in Hubris are actually not yours. In my, at least, where I went and found them was in role-playing games. In where? Role-playing games. Hmm. RPG. Now, role playing games. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, I get it. And, and I'm, tr I'm trying to uh, imagine myself back at the stack. Um, your game, Morgan, it was, it was a simulation. It definitely is. It aims to be, yes. And it's funny because it was, to me, because when you say, is, is, for me, psychologically, when you say simulation, I tend to have, it, it's constraint. You, you got to work within these parameters. And um, your game didn't look like that when I looked at it. it. It was, if it was a simulation, which you're telling me it is a simulation, it was accessible. And HB said, what the F is Euro elements? Well, this is one of the things HB, I don't know who HB is on the, on the, in the peanut gallery, but uh, uh, yeah, that's a Euro element. So Morgan, it, it doesn't look like a simulation, meaning it doesn't have the, um, the, uh, the, the, for me, the psychological difficulty that comes with when you say, Dan, we're going to play a simulation today, or we're going to play a game that has uh, basically no, it, it's a historical. Did I just make any sense there, or did I just go on? No, I mean, it's, it's not the material, it's not the fitness, the rule book which makes a simulation. What, what mm. makes a simulation is if your model is true to the historical drivers, yeah. right? <clears throat> the reality. Uh, Mark's game is a simulation, and it's it's mm. it, it, it worked a lot. And I, I was there, and I <laughs> I could I can you encourage me. Yeah, I, I I bullied you into some things, but <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it, I loved it. Very hard, <laughs> very hard to make the game as accessible as could be, while still being true to the core principles and Focusing the design, and you know, Robert has is probably has probably the, the leanest games of the three of us. And still, there's a lot of very true elements in there because you, when you build, a, remember that every simulation is a model, and a model cannot represent the whole reality. You have to focus on what you are trying to place at the center of your argument, what you are trying to get your audience to get, to, to understand, to play with. You're talking about the big picture now. Well, it can be the big picture. It can be a certain dynamic, say, um, you know, speaking of Holland Spieler, you take the games, their games on the American Revolution, the supply lines, they did these games focusing on the interaction around the supply lines because they wanted to focus it. And it's still a simulation of these wars with a focus on the supply lines. And other games will have different approaches. Herald, HB, did a wonderful coin game on the um, American Revolution with a very different tack with the interactions between the four factions and with the tensions between them and, you know, mostly cooperation. But also well, I mean, just, just the title, he wanted to piss off people by calling the Americans insurrect an insurrection, like the, like the rebels or something. But you're right. I mean, there was an element of provocation, and I, I think he was absolutely right in doing so. But, but what I'm saying is that you've got to pick your angle, right? And, and, and this is the story you're telling. And so, in my opinion, in many ways, for instance, why did Hubris, you know, notwithstanding Ten Dragon and other things, why did it take so long to get to where it is today? Because I changed my angle on the model. Because I, I did it using, I would say, a fairly classical CDG, you know, system. And it worked. And people, you know, being at a stack, 
played it, loved it. There was a ton of chrome and history and content and good decisions to make. There was one person who was not happy with the game, and that was me. Oh, yeah. Because it was not focusing on the right things. I was not finding when playing the same kind of narrative. I think narrative is extremely important. So what I would get from reading the history books. So Morgan, you did not have a you did not have a mechanic to bring out your idea for that. The the, the mechanic that I borrowed initially did not place the emphasis, the focus on the right things. And so the narrative was skewed because it was not appropriate for what I was trying to tell. And so it took me time to recognize it and pivot and rebuild. And I had to build from scratch. And obviously, again, build free ideas from various games and various systems, including RPGs, to place the focus where I wanted it to be. And so the the, the, your, the model and the axis of the model shifted. And, and it's not more complex, but the complexity is now, I would say, focused on a different axis. And I yeah, don't do it. But as a result, the game is probably simpler mechanically, but does a better job of telling the story, of creating the narrative I was after. And maybe this, you know, someone else would get into that game and want to tell a different story and would focus on different elements. Um, Robert, your your games being being smaller games. Um, are are your, your games are simulations? No, they're they're games. I wouldn't make the claim that they're simulations. However, they're games that are rooted in uh, historical okay. dynamics. And okay. uh, I, I really liked uh, how um, Morgan sort of uh, sort of just everything that she just said, I think was was right on right on target for for how you approach this is that you, you know, what makes a game small in a sense uh, for me is a very narrow focus on a particular set of dynamics that I want to look at. In both the games, both of the solo games I did, what I was focused on were the decision spaces that I felt were available to the commanders in both of these conflicts, to Marcus Aurelius in the Marcomannic Wars and to Stilicho in the early fifth century. I wanted to see, and my research and my interest was what sort of decisions did this sort of person, was this sort of person able to make at this time? Uh, and and given, given the sort of uh, resources that they had, given the sort of opposition they were up against, both internal and external. And um, that's a particular approach. And that allowed me to keep a very tight sort of focus. There are aspects I, you know, let me just say that I, I feel quite happy with how both of those games model that decision space based on how I understand the history. And I think that it presents, I hope, a kind of compelling and an interesting, interesting look at that. Um, but I wouldn't call them simulations per se, because I think there's a level of complexity that I would have had to have engaged with that would have almost a kind of a zooming out to look at look at the the conflicts in both cases from a, a little bit of a wider lens and uh, to look at some of the other inputs, as Morgan called them, into kind of the historical situation that I that didn't really fit with the type of mechanics that I was I was using. They are, as Morgan said, they're they're fairly lean games. They were intended to be lean, and that limits a little bit of what one can do when it comes to trying to simulate mm -hmm. kind of the mm -hmm. whole the whole thing. Sorry, that was a bit of a long winded way of saying you... something. No, no, I say long winded. <laughs> Just listen to me. I'm long winded. <laughs> um, and so Morgan, it's funny. Eh? I, I I don't see the simulation when I look at the game Hubris. When I see, I don't see because when I think simulation, for some reason I think Hex Encounter. I don't know why. Hmm. I don't know why. And and Mark, your game is it Hex Encounter? No, it's counters, but not Hex. <laughs> so, uh, oh, oh wait wait, um, Robert, what scale is Marcus? Marcus, uh, Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> no, rien de rien. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> no, je ne regrette rien. Il est bien comme a fait. Il est mal. Tu sais, mes amis, mes gars. I'm just looking for the restroom at SDSCon. 
Um, I, I think I got the wrong room. I, no, I, no, no. Uh, first of all, I've got the wrong room. I've no, no, uh, sir, sir, yeah. sir. Oh, sorry. I'll just, I'll no, just no, one moment, call. please. Right one yeah. moment, please. Yes, son of a. Do <laughs> 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 right, no, you put him good. in the penalty box? Yeah, whatever. Uh, Mark, um, the map, the maps that you have. What was it? Area control? Is it? Uh, well, it, it's how do you move? Like, how do you how do you take uh, a region? Um, well, it's uh, it's point to point, but point uh, to point, okay. Obviously, each point uh, that that's what I explained to many people. Uh, it, it encompasses a, a wide region. Uh, so, uh, so uh, in my game, the 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 points and the turn are uh, fairly. Uh, wide I, I don't know if i'm clear but uh, a turn is, is several weeks and uh, uh, a point is uh, several hundred miles each direction and but because i have a pseudo tactical combat system people have always the feeling that uh, the armies are meeting in a plane at the precise moment but actually it's what happened over a wide area over uh, several weeks so uh, so yeah uh, and when you move it it's very simple uh, the regular troops they they slug their way and uh, the light troops they 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 run circles around them and uh, make their life miserable uh, so so that I don't know. You want me to be more precise? Well, no. It's 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 because I have questions on your game. I, um, yeah. Is it all of does does does, does it, uh, How far do we go into the states in your okay, game? Okay, you go you go from uh, the Car Carolinas to uh, to uh, Nova Scotia, uh, Cape that, Breton. That, that's south. Yeah, but it, it, it's abstracted. Uh, you have uh, uh, ninety. 96, uh, which is uh, near the Cherokee uh, uh, area. So uh, I, I added that at the very end because uh, I felt the Cherokee Nation was a bit too cornered in my previous board for their importance in that uh, conflict. And uh, from, north, for, from north to south, you go from uh, uh, Philadelphia to uh, or Alexandria, Virginia, all, all the way to uh, Quebec, and uh, even uh, Gaspésia. Uh, Gaspésia. Yeah. 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 Did I did I say it right? What? No, I never heard of that. Gaspésia. Gaspésia. No, no, Gaspésia. I, th I thought it was some Latin. Uh, Gaspésia. Let's go uh, I think I read that in uh, geological books. Uh. It's, whatever it is, it's it's it's, yeah. it's Harold's fault. Okay. Oh yeah! And, okay. Oh yeah! We gotta do the San Diego historic on uh, uh, plug. <laughs> okay, uh, Robert, will you be going? Will you be attending any San Diego historic on events? I will be. Yes. Please tell us what which ones. Let me see. I have to pull up my calendar. I want to go see. Um, I was actually. I, I have to apologize to uh, Morgan because I wanted to go to your hubris uh, demo tomorrow, but I'm getting my uh, getting my vaccination shot. I just got a call, and I'm uh, I'm I I'm I'm very sorry to miss it. It was a tough decision, but I I ultimately had to choose to stay alive. So yeah, I will, it's uh, to live. I had to choose to live. <laughs> Was it your first <laughs> shot? So I hope you will forgive me. Is it your first shot? It's my first shot. Wow. Okay. And which oh. one are you getting? I don't know. Whatever they're going to give me. Uh, yeah, I took the I took the AstraZeneca. And I got so sick. Oh, uh, got me, to, uh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. I I I uh, and all that. Uh, a day and a half. You know, but it's a good thing weed is legal in Canada because that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, I have a I have a, a general question here. When when it's point to point, do we talk about scale? Yeah, yeah, you need scale. It's just it's all uh, fudged. What what's important is that if you go to from one end of the map to the other, uh, the distance makes sense. But obviously, in more uh, contested areas, it's kind of blown up, and uh, in more remote areas, it's kind of scaled down. 
Okay. I, I love doing that. It depends because it depends also on your time scale. And and when you go point to point, distance is not the most important thing. What is yeah. more important are the bottlenecks. These are the pinch points where you can actually block something. And, you know, it's, it's, it's important to, to get, if you control that point, then you block any advance, let's say, up the Champlain or up the uh, uh, Saint-Sacrement Lake or whatever. So, um, so point to point is not so keen on actual distance because depending on your time scale, it can be largely irrelevant. Um, I mean, it's irrelevant, isn't it? It's not entirely irrelevant, but it's less relevant than the actual, I would say, logical graph of of key positions in an area. And Morgan. Um... Uh, what are you going to be doing for the for the for the San Diego uh, con? Well, I'm adding another hubris demo that uh, Robert mentioned. So okay. tomorrow, uh, and then I'm planning to go and and, and basically, uh, you know, enjoy myself and look at games and and try to see, you know, a, a few cool new games. I mean, there's a there's a number of new concepts coming up. Um, some of them have been. Uh, following more or less closely that I definitely want to check upon. I mean, it's um, just going to enjoy myself for the most part, I hope. Um, and uh, Mac? Yeah, uh, I'm hosting a demo game uh, Saturday at uh, 9 o'clock uh, Pacific. Obviously, so means, uh, bayonets, bayonets and Tomahawk, right? Bayonets and Tomahawks, yeah. Uh, I'm going to that. If I'm, not, if I'm not knocked out by the vaccine, I will be there. Oh, okay, cool. Robert, did it you be think, nice uh, to see you. Did, did I? Uh, and I'm sorry, I must have cut you off. Did uh, Did you say when your your events were uh, happening? Do you have any events happening at? Oh, uh, have any? No, I'm not. I'm not down. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. No, no. Mm. And Marco, what time is it, Mark? What time is your thing? It's uh, nine o'clock uh, Pacific time, which means uh, noon around here. What time? Hmm. Um, Friday, Saturday? Saturday, Saturday. And uh, right after that, uh, I have the, uh, I take part in the kind of Ar game. Art of War game uh, discussion. And uh, so I'm saying hello to Edmonton. I've been there, lovely city, uh, so great not... art and everything. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, there will be an interesting panel of uh, graphic artists uh, from our industry. So there will be uh, Terry Leeds, uh, uh, also, uh, well, several, uh, sorry, now it's my turn to, uh, it's my turn to. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, bug. It's I, I, I'm bug. For and you know, it, it's funny talking about artists. Uh, yeah. Everybody here knows um, Rick Barber, right? Mm -hmm. The the map artist. Uh, you know, he he just passed like a, a, a two weeks ago, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, don't you say that? No, no. It's uh, trist. I know, say trist, ah, Chris. That's, uh, oh, yeah. About a week ago, I think, yes. So, uh, Morgan, I can't hear you. About about a week ago, I think. Yeah. Okay. And, I, anyways, I, I really enjoyed his art. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you three guys one last uh, question. I'm going to start with Robert. What's next on your plate, man? Well, I mentioned it earlier. I've got a game that I'm working on on the Siege of Vienna, uh, 1683, two-player game, um, which hopefully will be coming out next year. We've got some more. We're into artwork right now, and uh, then there'll be, you know, its development is ongoing and, and some more playtesting play and so forth, but I'm very excited about it. And this will be published by? This by Capstone. Capstone, that's right. You said yeah. it. And Morgan, I say, uh, when you finish Hubris in 20 years, uh, what's your next game? <laughs> That's mean. That's very mean. <laughs> uh, I've got so many projects to choose from. I'm not quite sure what the next one will be. I've got a um, couple con games which are in very preliminary stages. Uh, I've got a couple completely off the <laughs> Out of the box ideas as well that I would like to pursue. I, I'm not quite sure. Depends on. You know, I'm, I don't think I'm supposed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> you know, Fred Serval. Of course. He's doing. He's doing a Robin Hood coin game. I know. Oh. What do you mean? You know? 
I know I've played it. I've, You're not supposed. Yes. I did. I've tried it too. <laughs> I did. Oh, that I guy's didn't. gonna get a shot in the head. But anyways, <laughs> Fred, is a, Fred is a good friend, and I'm definitely looking forward because we will be quasi neighbors when I'm in Paris. He's in London. No, he's in England. He's in England. Exactly. So it's it's like you know it's a two hour train. I'm sorry, train. <laughs> <laughs> right from Paris. It's like my That's insane. Toronto. That's insane. That's insane. Because if I want to go to Toronto, if I want to go see Robert and I want Robert to buy me a beer and buy me lunch, it's going to take four hours. Hmm. Well, so, you, you know, if you drive, you know, so I, I'd rather just stay in Quebec and have Mac. Mac, <laughs> buy me a couple of, you know, drink some caribou and, you know, uh, uh, smoke I some Quebecois. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying, man? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, what's what's on the plate for you, man? What's going on? Uh, I have uh, two projects. Uh, one would be to have uh, uh, an extension, an expansion of scenario packs for uh, Bayonet. Sometimes. Oh no Hawks. way! Okay. Yeah, there there's a, already one that wasn't included in the original uh, box, uh, and uh, the other would be uh, it's uh, another big. Big life project would be to to do the siege of Quebec, the whole tree. Ah, nice. Uh, it, it, it's never been done uh, since uh, Quebec 1759 by Columbia Games uh, in uh, 1976, <laughs> in the previous century. And uh, no. I always wanted to to I'm, I'm to, very, try, very to try to try it. I'm very interested in knowing the details. Please, let's keep in touch so we can do something like this. And uh, you know what I mean? Morgan's going to be away, so we'll have more time to talk. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? <laughs> All right. All if right. You, if only you can do a French designers group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I mean, uh, there's going to be no Americans, man. There's only going to be, there's one, and, and, and what the hell? <laughs> Oui? Non? Merci, j'ai déjà mangé. Au revoir. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm a professional guy. I want to be professional. And how can I be professional when I got a guy like that bombing me? Uh, anyways. <laughs> so, guys, thank you very much. This was a lot of fun. Morgan, I'm going to miss you. Mark. I, I can't wait to meet you. Robert, you're yeah. in Toronto. Hasta la vista. No. Uh, uh, Robert, do you know Gilbert Collins? No. Okay. Okay, because I'm I, I'm pulling a I'm pulling a uh hey, I'm from Canada. Do you know this person? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Anyways, Robert, it was nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. Morgan, it's man. We yeah. been you know, in, in this era, we can we can stay in touch even across the ocean. I mean, I'm doing it every day for work. We can do it for games. Hmm. Yeah, I guess, I guess. And obviously, you guys have no time to play games, right? That's my problem. <laughs> Only my own. That's the problem. Yeah, that's I'm what the, sucks and, about designing. And uh, Robert, I'm interested. I'm interested in one of your titles. Which one should I get? Um, I would say start with Stilico. Okay. Okay, and Morgan, before I even start to play Pendragon or anything like that, you'll probably be finished Hubris. Um, and Mac, ben, Mac, we'll see each other. I, I'll work faster this time. Mm -hmm. I have experience. <laughs> I know, and I, we messed around. This is this is this is Harold's baby. He only <laughs> paid me ten thousand dollars. How many? How much? How much money did he pay you guys? Oh, he, he went cheap on you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you very much. Uh, Morgan, thank sure. you. Matt, merci. Robert, nice to meet you. Nice meeting you, too. I'm going to pick up Stolikio, and you know your next game. Uh, we'll, we'll keep, uh, let's do an interview on your next game. I'd love that. That'd be great. Okay, and Morgan, very forget good. it. And uh, I, have, I have an outro here because I'm very professional. Guys and ladies, thank you very much. Right. Thank you very and, much. And uh, stick around.
uh, because there's a there's a there's a lot of a drinks uh, alcohol is free Harold's pain. <laughs>